19 tonight. Chapter 1. Chapter 1. Yes, sir. Along with people and family. So the book of Proverbs means two different meanings. Uh, one is a dark saying. And again, uh, it's not a dark saying to those of us who love the Lord and seek our counsel from Him. But it is a dark saying to those people who do not seek the counsel of the Lord and think they've got it all figured out and they can do it themselves. But there's a lot of people in the world like that, unfortunately. But it, it, you know, the points of God's wisdom is hidden from the foolish. Uh, I think it's Proverbs 23, 9 it says, Speak not into the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Have you ever tried to give somebody some good counsel out of God's word? They don't want to hear it. They don't want nothing to do with it. They don't want nothing to do with God. They don't want to do anything to do with His instructions. Uh, so you cannot speak uh, knowledge in the ears of a fool. Neither will a fool seek wisdom from God's Word. Um, now I know we got to verse 7, but I'm going to go ahead and start with that again because this verse right here is the principal thing to obtaining knowledge from God's Word. Uh, it is the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now, a lot of people look at that word fear and they think we're supposed to fear God in order to obtain knowledge. It doesn't mean fear here. It means to revere, which means to love. So often is that word mistranslated, especially in the book of Proverbs. We have nothing to fear. So if you love something... Like playing music, for instance, you practice it. If you're a marathon runner, what do you do? You run a little bit every day and build up your stamina so that you can run the marathon. You love someone, you want to spend time with them. Well, it's no different than being in God's Word. If you love God, then you will spend time with Him. Whether it be in His Word, whether it be in prayer, whether it be come to church or come to Bible study. And it's no different than that marathon runner. You have to exercise your mind in this Word. And the more you do it, the more you understand and the more that God will give to you. Um, he says that He will give it to you liberally. In the book of James, all you do is have to ask Him and He will give it to you. Why? Because the more you study and learn the Bible, the more you understand the Hebrew idioms and you understand the analogies and you understand the parables that Christ would speak, you learn and exercise your mind in the Word of God. Alright, so uh, that was verse 7 verse 8. My son, hear the instructions of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. This is talking about following the instructions of our heavenly father. Not taking anything away from our earthly father, but this is talking about our heavenly father. And it says, For, forsake not the law of thy mother. This is talking about Mother Israel. Why? Because the laws were handed down to those people in the Old Testament. So for, forsake not the law of thy mother as well. Alright, verse 9. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck. Now some of y'all weren't here on Sunday when we were talking about uh, the sermon was about right and wrong. Well, so the thing about it is when you obtain knowledge from God's Word, can nobody take it away from you. Amen. And it will help you to make a lot more right decisions than wrong decisions. Why does it say it's an ornament around your neck? Because you always have it with you. In any given situation, you have this with you when you spend time in it and spend time with God. Alright, verse 9. I'm sorry, I just did that. Uh, verse 10. Uh, this verse right here... Um, I like it, but I've, I've done this a lot in a jail ministry before, talking about people who've been in and out of trouble and in and out of jail and uh, continue to get in trouble. This is a good verse. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Don't listen to them. They will lead you to do things that you're not supposed to do. And ain't nobody not sitting in this church tonight that has not been misled or been enticed by somebody else want you to do something when you knew it was going to get you in trouble. But you did it anyway. Absolutely. So he's saying, do not listen to them when they try to entice you. <clears throat> Alright, verse 11. If they say, come with us, 
Let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Hey, that's murder. When they're out looking out seeking to take blood. And let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. They are always looking for trouble. Someone who stays in trouble and gets in trouble, they're always looking for trouble. Alright, verse 11. Man, I keep going back at verse. Uh, verse 12. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and the whole as those that go down into a pit. Was that the right verse? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Again, somebody that's always looking for trouble. This is something that a, a sinner will say. Do we not set our own sentence in this life? Yes, we do. By the decisions that we make in our lives. We set our own sentence in our own course. Uh, and this is also saying that, uh, in other words, whatsoever sentence you place on someone else that is innocent or cause their good name to be darkened, that will be the judgment God places on you. It is the law of nature. What goes around comes around. Verse 13. We shall find precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. This is talking about ill-gotten gains. And I always say that a camel will have better luck going through the eye of a needle than they will to walk through the gates of heaven. God does not like people who rip off His children. Uh, let's see here. Alright, verse 14. Cast thy lots among us, let us have one purse. You know, that's called communism. And God does not like communism, and communism will never stand in this country. But what I like about this verse is, being in and out of trouble myself as when I was young, uh, you see how people, you'll have 10 to 12 people or 8 people or whatever, all piling up in the same house, and they're pooling all their money together to buy their next fix, or to buy some more dope, or to buy some more booze, or buy some more drugs. They, they put all their money in one purse uh, to get themselves just in just a little bit more trouble. <clears throat> And God expects every keg to stand on its own bottom. That's the thing about it is you might pull all your stuff together, but I guarantee you one thing, you will stand before judgment and God on your own, by yourself. Your friends aren't going to be there with you. Your mom and dad is not going to be there with you. Your minister is not going to be there with you. Everyone will have to stand on their own. I mean, we're supposed to help, but... You know, you cannot help somebody that will not help themselves. And you know after a while, you keep trying to help somebody, keep trying to help, and they keep doing the same thing, and keep doing the same thing over again. Until somebody is ready to change and help themselves, you cannot help them. Verse 15. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path by simply selecting those who you will run with in your life. You know, I could say that's easily to say, well, that's just teenagers and just these young people, but man, there's the grown adults that know better today will pick the run with the wrong people. If you hang around somebody that smokes dope every day, you're going to start smoking dope. If you hang around somebody that's going to shoplift every day, you're going to start shoplifting. It is the law of nature. And God in, in Proverbs and wisdom here is saying, refrain your foot from them. You've got to make better friends and start running with, di with different people. You know, I've told that before some people in jail, and they'd say, well, brother, you just don't understand. They're my friends, and I don't want to judge them. You're not judging them. You're trying to make a better way of life for yourself. And if you are not strong enough to run with them, then you can't run with them. It's, again, the law of nature. <clears throat> Verse 16. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Always looking for trouble and always looking for somebody to rip off. I think Jerry's always had a saying that says that water always seeks its own level. And that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Water always seeks its own level. Alright, verse 17. Now this is the verse again. Uh, a lot of people that I've tried to help in the jail ministry, surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of the bird. So basically what this is saying is, you put up a big old net out there and a bird's flying along, it sees the net. 
but it'll fly right into it anyway. Now, do people not do the same thing? Again, you do something in your life and you know that there's a chance that you're going to get in trouble, and you do it anyway. Think, well, maybe I can just get away with it one more time. That old net spread out there that Satan has out there to snag you up, just waiting for you to fall so that you can end up in the same place as the rest of these people who are looking for trouble. All right, verse 18. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. <clears throat> they give absolutely no thought about eternal life. How many people have you known in your lifetime growing up? No thought about God, no thought about eternal life, always just living to whatever they can get into next, wherever they can get their next meal or make their next dime. Never worrying about their souls with God. <clears throat> Verse 19, so are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. God is warning you, there is no getting away with it. Have you ever noticed that? I don't care, it might have been 10 years ago that you did something or lied about something, or you were so afraid that something was going to come out. It will eventually come to light. It might not be in a year, a month, or five or ten years, but it will come out. You're not going to get away with it. Anybody got any questions? Stop right there.